welcome to lesson four where we will be learning about two variable inequalities. Before we get into the new details of this lesson, we need to review something from first semester. Remember if you're given a line in slope-intercept form, you can take the slope and the y-intercept and use those to graph. A slope of two-thirds means go up two and right three, while a y-intercept of four means to start at four on the y-axis. And we use the slope to give us a second point, and then we can find other points and connect the dots. This graphing skill is going to be essential to being successful in this new lesson. As you saw from the title and target, this lesson is about two variable inequalities. This means that we're going to see an inequality symbol, and not just x, but also a second variable such as y. Just like we did with one variable inequalities, we want to start off by talking about what a solution means. A solution is something that when plugged in results in a true statement. So let's find out if 3, negative 5 is a solution. Well, 3 is the x value, while negative 5 is the y value of this point. So I'll plug 3 in for x and negative 5 in for y. So 2 times 3 plus negative 5 is less than 2. Simplifying, we get 6 minus 5 is less than 2, or 1 is less than 2. This is a true statement. So yes, 3, negative 5 is a solution. However, it's not the only solution. For example, if I plug something in like negative 10, 0, that would also give us a true statement. So there's actually many ordered pairs that could meet this requirement. In a situation where you could have so many answers, it's usually better to graph, as through shading we can represent many points at once. And that brings us to the main idea of today's lesson, how to graph a two-variable inequality. I've put the procedure list down here, but I really want to just walk you through it. There's also a table that's going to help you with some of the rules, and we'll fill that out as we go. We're being asked to graph y is less than 2x minus 3. The first step of our process is to put it in something like slope-intercept form. So while we won't have an equal sign here, we should still see only a y on the left, an x term, and then a constant term. So this guy's already in slope-intercept form. Now just like if we were graphing a line, we can look at the slope, and we can even write that as a fraction, meaning I'm going to go up 2 and write 1, and we can look at the y-intercept, meaning we're going to start this graph at 0, negative 3. So I start the graph at 0, negative 3, and I'm going to go up 2 and over 1. Now for these problems, it's very important that you fit as many points on the graph as you can. So I keep following that up 2 over 1 pattern, and go backward by going down 2 and left 1 until I run out of room. This was the second step of graphing the line as if it were an equation. Now the third step is to determine proper shading. We talked about the fact that there could be many solutions here, and the way we're going to show those solutions is through shading. When we do not see an or equal to line in our inequality, that means all of the normal solutions to the equation are only boundary points. Well, the normal solutions to an equation are the points on the line all of these points, and everything in between. The way we're going to show that these points are only boundaries is by instead of putting a solid line, we're going to put a dashed line. This gives us a visual boundary while also showing that these aren't actually solutions. If there were an or equal to line, we could have just used a solid line. So that helps you understand the difference between when you use a dashed and a solid line. How about shading above or below? This is a pretty simple rule. When you have a less than, the points that are going to work are all of the points that are below the line. This line cuts the graph into two halves, the above half and the below half. If you're ever having a hard time deciding which half is which, pick a point on the line and then just slide your finger up. That's the above side. Slide your finger down. That's the below side. Now, since this problem is a less than, I'm going to shade below. That means every one of these points below the line, they are all solutions to this inequality. Since there's so many possible solutions, the graph is the best way to communicate these answers. So this would be our final answer. Let's summarize these rules that we just talked about in this table. We shade above when there's a greater than symbol. We shade below when there's a less than symbol. We use a solid line when there's an or equal to, and we leave it dashed when there's not. And the shading represents all of the ordered pairs that are solutions to this inequality. 
Now that we've gotten to understand this procedure, we should be able to move a little bit faster. Step one is slope intercept form, which this is already in. I identify the slope, the fact that it means going down one and right two. I identify the y intercept, which means my graph starts at zero three. I create all my additional points by going down one and right two from that y intercept and going up one and left two. This line does not have an or equal to, so I'm going to make a dashed line through these points. And this is a greater than, so I'm going to shade above. And the graph is our final answer. This problem seems a little bit tricky because there's no x term. So you might not think this is in slope intercept form. But remember from first semester, that really just means that our slope is zero, making the x term disappear. This is really the graph of a horizontal line starting at a y value of four. Now because there's a line underneath, this is going to be a solid line, and the greater than is going to tell me to shade above. So this would be our graph. Next let's look at a problem that starts off in standard form rather than slope intercept form. Just like we would with an equation, we're going to have to move this into slope intercept form. So I'm going to start by moving over the x term, subtracting 2x. Then I'm going to divide by negative 3. Now don't forget, we're dividing by a negative with an inequality which means we're going to have to flip the inequality sign. Now we've got this written in slope intercept form. This tells me that my slope is 2 thirds, so up 2, right 3, and my y intercept is 0, negative 3. So we start at negative 3, we go up 2 over 3 until we fill out the graph. We have a greater than or equal to sign, so or equal to means solid line, so the boundary is part of the solution set, and that greater than means that we're going to shade above. So I shade on top of the line. And the graph is our final answer. We also need to be able to start with a graph and turn it into an equation. To write the equation, we need to figure out the slope and y-intercept. My y-intercept appears to be at 2, and I'm going up 1 and over 5 to get to another point, making my slope 1 fifth. So if we were writing the equation, we would say y equals mx plus b, so y equals 1 fifth x plus 2. But for an inequality, we've got to figure out what sign goes in the middle. Well, we shaded above the line, so it's a greater than, and our line is solid, so it must be a greater than or equal to line. If it were dashed, it would just be greater than. And this is the equation that goes with that graph. Lastly, I just want to make sure we understand the idea that the shaded region represents all the ordered pairs that are solutions to the inequality. So this multiple choice question asks us which points are solutions. Well, if we look at 4, 5, it's over here, not in the shaded region. So it's not a solution. So the answer is obviously not A. 0, negative 3 is on the dotted line. But remember, the dotted line is a boundary, not part of the solutions. So 0, negative 3 is not a solution. So B is out. Negative 4, negative 5 is right in the middle of the shaded region. That makes it a solution. Negative 4, 0 is also in the shaded region. That also makes it a solution. So C is correct. From part C, we know that negative 4, negative 5 is a solution. But 5, 0 is over here in the non-shaded area. So D is out. So the only correct answer here is C. So to summarize graphing two variable inequalities, treat them as if they're an equation you're graphing in slope-intercept form. You do need to know the rules about the line and the shading. If it is a less than problem, you're going to shade below the line. If it's a greater than problem, you're going to shade above the line. If you see an or equal to line, then you make it a solid line, but if you don't, you make it a dashed line. If you came away with anything else, write that down now, otherwise we'll see you in the next lesson.